Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to another RMA Fire tutorial. And in this tutorial, I made a short three tutorial series. I'm gonna show you guys the inspiration that I got for the creation of this effect. And that's um, Extra Weg. Extra Weg does really, really, really cool work. If you guys haven't seen him, I really um, recommend you follow him. Um, a while ago, I saw a beautiful effect that he did on his Instagram, and and this is this is the effect, guys, that I wanted to test out how we can create. Um, it's probably not gonna be like exactly the same thing because I have no exact clue of how he approached it or how he made it exactly. Um, but here's the result that I was able to get. Um, as you can see, it has some very interesting things and the way that I broke up this tutorial is in three different parts that I feel like they're all uh, crucial for the understanding of how to set something like this up. So as part one, let's have a look at what we're going to be creating. All right, here's how, we got, how we're gonna execute it. Go ahead and drop down a grid. I'm gonna make this invisible. And I wanna explain to you guys how we go about controlling, using our, uh, a gradient ramp, the, the amount of space, the, the amount of like stiffness that this thing has um, controlled based on this ramp. So for example, um, if I come here and on this ping to constraints, we do a scale of 100, then we are going to see that the simulation is going to be like, you know, very, very contained on this space. But if I scale this up to like, much smaller value say for example a 0.1 you will notice that now this thing is going to affect the black a lot more and this thing here is built on this color gradient so in this first part let's look into how we can create how we can control um, the values of black and white and having those black and white being pinned or non-pinned to the to the position, to the rest position. What does that mean? So let's drop down a grid and we're gonna remesh the grid because that's better for cloth. Then we're gonna make the point separation a little lower so that we have a higher resolution on this mesh. We're gonna duplicate this and we are going to drop down a color and connect it here this color is going to be white and we're going to drop down another color that is going to be black and it's going to have a sphere this sphere we're going to utilize this sphere to transfer the color so attribute transfer okay and let's have a look and transfer the black color into our grid. Um, now I want to have the this this black color here a little bit more control. We can do we can use an attribute blur, and on the attribute blur we can set this to be CD. And this is essentially going to allow you to blur it out even more and soften it. So this is our color and this color drives the values that we're going to have control the stretch stiffness. So we're going to do an attribute transfer and transfer basically the same thing that we did here. This values into our simulation grid and this simulation grid, we can control the resolution based on the, the target size of the points. Let's come here and let's drop down an at um, cloth, a vellum cloth. You're gonna want a vellum solver, 
and we want to plug in the vellum solver under the vellum cloth and make sure that on the forces we turn off simulation gravity let's connect this here and right now we have just a default sim nothing's gonna happen there's not even gravity but we want to drop down a um, vellum constraints vellum constraints we're gonna pin the points to the target so pin to target meaning that the points are essentially being stuck to this points that we have here but we're gonna control how stuck they are based on an attribute um, what I mean by stuck is that they are basically frozen um, but we're gonna gradiently force them therefore we're gonna come here and we're gonna do a soft pin to target and we're gonna control the stretch of the of this based on an attribute called stretch stiffness so what is this doing if we set i'll show you guys in a second we're gonna copy this we're going to after the color use the color to drive that attribute so let's drop down a wrangle the wrangle we're gonna say float at the stretch stiffness stretch stiffness is going to be equal to a one and then we're going to say at stretch stiffness is multiplied or is equal to at cd.r which that way references our color here so we're going to grab this sphere that i have here animated and the sphere that i have here is just basically done animated downwards let's have a look at what we have and what's happening so in order to really visualize what's happening clearly we can one reduce the amount of stretch stiffness here which is a multiplier for the stretch stiffness so let's just set it to a decent value and then we'll do look in deeper you can see that with a lower value it's reacting a little more now let's copy both of these colors here the black and the white and this way you can see what each one does so if the grid is black we will see that it the points are not sticking but if the grid is white we will see that the points do stick. Okay, so how do we find a good medium in between them? So, black means active, the white one are more still. Let's make things a little bit more dark and just the edges white. And let's see what we get. So you can see that our edges are definitely sticking more um, and that goes a long way in terms of like the base setup for this type of effect. I'm going to show you guys one last thing if we do this and I want to do an attribute delete. I just want to get attribute delete, I just want to get rid of the color so it's not um, disturbing. And I want to decrease this value here to show you guys that now the cloth is going to become much more responsive. Basically just a multiplier, but the edges, the edges are still sticking. So yeah, I found this to be a this is going to be like the base of our effect but as as well as like it's already giving us some really interesting collision results for something being low res um, all right guys i hope you guys liked it and i'll be back with more